problem is, is the political elite in this country is failing to make the adjustments that we have to make or we're going to end up like Greece, Portugal, Spain, Italy, and ultimately France. We have taken a stupid pill. And now we sit bankrupt. We're physically bankrupt, fiscally bankrupt and physically bankrupt at this moment, except we just haven't recognized it. And what is happening in Europe is going to happen to us in less than a year. Oh, that's a little scary, but it's potentially true. Joining us now from Washington, Republican Senator from Oklahoma, Senator Tom Coburn. Senator, it's great to have you. Always great to have you. Back Tom. on the show this morning. Good morning. How are it, you guys? Is there any sign that the stupid pill is wearing off yet? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. I, you know, I think, our, the, the, you know, the, the country is in such precarious shape that we need to take it uh, and put a new set of people to solve the problem. Uh, uh, and I'm talking about both parties. Uh, it is so frustrating being here. You know, yesterday I tried to get an amendment up. We spend $51,000 per student on military bases, 16 bases in this country. 250% more than the worst school district in, in the country, Washington, D.C. We spend two and a half times as much. And I tried to save a billion dollars over five years by saying we'll give the local schools $12,000 plus their impact aid and we'll shut down this and quit wasting this money. And you can't even get an amendment up. And so wh mm. what you see is a paralysis in Washington. No longer can we trust the career politicians to handle the, the deeds of the country. It, it's really disappointing. S Senator, did you just <clears throat> say that we were spending $51,000 per pupil on military on military base schools, that's right. Fifty-one thousand per year oh per my. student. Can you believe that? No. So Tom tries to put a common sense amendment up to to take care of this, and Tom, they don't even let you get the amendment. That's on right. The can't, floor. Even, can't even can't even make the amendment pending. Tom, these uh, people these people are not serious. Leaders of both parties are not serious. <laughs> they they really don't understand that we're not that far behind Greece, the EU, uh, well, Italy. They Joe, don't get Joe, it, do they? Joe, Joe, the problem is, is there's an imbalance in terms of what they view for themselves versus what they view for the country. Mm. And this idea that you're going to protect your position instead of do what's the best right thing for the country is at a point where we're now at significant risk as a nation. I mean, you, you heard what came out of Europe late last night is now the, the IMF, which we're responsible for 17% of everything they commit to, uh, is going to be a CDO on Greece, a collateralized debt obligation. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to spend $200 billion of money we don't have now to try to pull out Greece, our money, our money. That we, money that we don't have, we'll have to go out and borrow, which is just going to complicate things. What we need to do is we need to have real leadership, or you were talking about that earlier, but on the things that count. And, and right now, the, the way you get a trillion dollars out of the Defense Department over 10 years is a billion dollars at a time. And, and we, we lack backbone, strength, and vision in the Congress. Senator Willie Geist here. We talked around this table a couple of weeks ago after the depressing failure of the Super Committee, which a lot of people thought might get something done, about there being a better way. There has to be a better way to get things done in Washington. It sounds like from what you're saying, the better way would be to get rid of a lot of these people and bring in new blood. What do you think specifically can be done to the system, though, to make it function better than it does for us today? Well, uh, you know, I, that's a difficult question. Let me just talk about the Senate. When I, when I came here the first two years, you could offer an amendment any time on anything, and people weren't afraid to vote yes or no. We have politicians so afraid for the next election that we our leadership, what their whole goal is to protect them so they don't have to make a vote. Well, what did we come here for? If you can't defend a vote either for or against something, you shouldn't be here in the first place. And now it's all risk avoidance. Uh, we don't want anybody to have a vote because it might affect their election, which might affect the mix of Congress. Well, that's a paralysis that is killing our country at the very time where we really need statesmanship and leadership that will say, we're going to think long term, we're going to solve the big problems. And OK, so somebody loses an election, the country gets well down the road and is better off. Uh, yeah. it, it, it's just so disappointing. 
It is. I want to ask about the payroll tax holiday bill, which is the next thing on deck. But first, you have a perspective over a number of decades from the inside and the outside. Right. Are things worse? Are they far worse? Or does it always feel worse at the moment? You know, I mean, I, Tom, Tom actually, oh. Tom, Tom actually was, was, we were together, we came in in 1994, and Tom and I were very lucky because when we took on Newt Gingrich, when he became too moderate, we had 70, 75 people that were with us. And I guess, Tom, at the end of the day, we had 10 or 11 people we could always count on going in and fighting the leadership. Um, and those 10 or 11 people would made the di make, make the difference. At the end of the day, we drove Newt out because he was spending way too much money. But it sounds like now, Tom, you're isolated. There is no Steve Largent next to you. There, 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 there is no Matt Salmon next to you. There are no small government conservatives next to you fighting this fight. Oh, I, I don't think that's true. Uh, Ron Johnson. Uh, is, is here. Uh, Jim Dement is here. Pat Toomey's here. Uh, uh, I, actually, the position is stronger. The problem is, is, is we don't have the ability to force things on the floor of the Senate, and the Senate's not being run anywhere like it's historically planned. You know, you can't even debate something in the Senate, uh, or you can't get anybody to come and debate you because they know they're not going to take a vote, so they just ignore it. So, and so hope Tom, it'll go away. What, what is the difference now between <laughs> when you and I and a few others? stood up to Newt to force conservative cuts, and what's happening today? What's the difference? Well, I think, first of all, the, the, our, our country's at much greater risk. Uh, uh, we, we, we have small margin of error today, and we have a much shorter time period with which to make the adjustments. You know, uh, what America would like for us to do, it's not get along. They want us to do what is in the best interest of the country right, Tom, and but put I, ourselves I'm asking, second. I'm asking internally. Yes, I, I know time is much shorter now even than it was when we had our battles against Republican leadership and Clinton. But I'm asking you internally inside the Senate, why can't you force the changes that we were able to force on Gingrich and crew? Well, because, because first of all, the Senate's set up totally different, Joe, is the majority leader controls everything. And, and unless you have a unified voice on the Republican side that says, you know, I would operate different with Harry Reid. I said, we're not doing anything till we agree that we're going to put the Senate back the way it should, used to be. And let's have that debate with the American people, because ultimately you can't fix what's wrong if you can't even get a billion dollar amendment up to take something that's stupid away. So I, th that I would I would start out with confrontation and then work to consolidate that and, and work. But we don't do that. And so the Senate basically has been paralyzed for two years in terms of doing things. Bills that are on the floor, nobody wants to allow an amendment, so then they pull the bills because they wouldn't allow amendments because they can't get and then they say it's a filibuster when yeah. in fact it's not a filibuster. Hey, right. Senator, it sounds to me as if Mitch McConnell is the prime suspect in, in this uh, immobility in the United States Senate. No, I don't think so. I, I, well, I think is? it's uh, Harry Reid is the prime Mike, suspect. Mike, Mike Barnacle, I mean, as, as Alexander Haig would say, check your constitution. <laughs> Mitch McConnell doesn't run the Senate. Well, it's but, another uh, guy. I, uh, I know, but Mitch, you, you've, been, you've been in the sports pages too long, Mitch, my man. Mitch McConnell is the guy who said his principal objective. No, come on. No, the guy who decides what comes up on the floor, though, is the majority leader. It's Harry Reid. Yep. Mitch, Mitch, you know, Mitch McConnell's a potted plant on this stuff, isn't he, Tom? Well, he, he's limited unless he can have 43, 47 Republicans come together 100 percent, which is another problem, is team, team leadership. Again, what we need is leaders that are thinking long term to solve our problems, not thinking about the next election. But that is not going to and, happen. And, 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 well, the paradox is, is if you actually demonstrate that to the people you represent, they restore confidence, which we have very little confidence from the American people right now. Tom, I have known you for for decades now, and you were a, a hero of mine, a small government hero of mine. I don't think I've ever talked to you about football. I don't even know if Lawrence had ever <laughs> talked to you about football. But if you could call somebody to Oklahoma and ask the Sooners to beat Oklahoma State, 
For us Alabama Crimson Tide fans, we certainly would appreciate it. Well, Joe, that's a difficult problem. I graduated from Oklahoma State before oh, no. I graduated from <laughs> Oklahoma. So, so go pokes this weekend and big. Oh, boy. Yeah, Senator baby. Tom Coburn. Hey, Tom, thank you for your thank leadership. You. Thank you, you so Very much. Nice to see you again. Up next, senior advisor to President Obama, Valerie Jarrett, joins us live from the White House. Much more Morning Joe in just